manga, comics, anime, cartoons, pixel art, digital photography, photo painting, digital painting, mga teknolohiyang gumagalaw sa pamamagitan ng computer generated technology. Ito lamang ang ibang halimbawa ng mga modern based art na nakikita natin sa telebisyon, internet, at ibang modern museums. Mas kilala din ito na digital art. Pero ano nga ba ang digital art? At yan ang pag-uusapan natin sa episode na ito. Kamusta? Ako si Gian. At ako si Jewel. Samahan niyo kami sa pagtalakay at pagsuri sa mundo ng digital art. Ito ang... Art Ventures! Mika Faboryal, or also known as Mikin as her art name, she is a 21-year-old second-year college multimedia art student in I Academy. She is a self-taught and self-reliant filmmaker, video editor, digital artist, graphic designer, and traditional artist. She is also a cat lover where she has two cats named Kinkin and Muffin. Mika is also an art contest winner in the League of Legends Spirit Blossoms for Digital Painting, and she won two times in the Small Words game for video editing. My profession lies in the art industry, specifically multimedia arts, which is or which can be uh, branched out into the digital art, traditional art, animation, literally anything that involves art. So lately, the, the kind of art that I'm doing is more on in the digital side. So I can, I'm capable of doing uh, semi-flat, semi-realism, realism. Pero, paano nga ba nagsimula ang digital art? The History of Art in 3 Minutes the oldest art we know of is about 40,000 years old. It was painted on cave walls or sculpted from rocks and consisted mainly of people killing animals or each other. An exception to that rule is the famous Woman from Willendorf, an abstract sculpture of a faceless obese lady wearing no clothes except a shower cap. After a while, people started to write things down, and proper history began. Civilizations developed in Egypt, Persia, Mesopotamia, Greece, Rome, India, and China. This highly significant period in art history gave the world pots, earthenware, crumbling temples, more pots, gods, warriors, warriors on pots, gods on pots, cats, god cats, and god cats on pots. In the Middle Ages, the West was dominated by the church, who disputed the validity of all the old gods and says there was in fact only one. Art could no longer feature unrealistic things like multi-limbed elephant dancers or winged bearded man horses, but had to be about things that happened in the Bible. This more realistic, down-to-earth approach gave us morose men in yellow hats, morose men in pink shawls, and lots and lots of glowing babies. Then came the Renaissance and a return to the material world. Real-life places were rendered in three dimensions, convincing use of perspective became widespread, and the human body was shown as it really is. Many images, however, remained religious in nature, and so also featured flying men with laser beam eyes done realistically. Eastern art continued to develop in its own distinct way, often showing scenes from nature or the everyday world like mountains, people kissing, or men in dressing gowns getting angry at other men in dressing gowns for riding albino dogs. Then came modern art and the dawn of the isms. Impressionism, Expressionism, Cubism, Dadaism, Surrealism, and other isms too numerous or rude to mention. The experiences of global war, the march of technological progress, and the popularization of theories about the universe and the human mind, as espoused by the likes of Einstein and Freud, left their indelible mark on our species. The artistic gloves were off and it was time to experiment. Shapes, splats, blocks of color, ghost pokes, weeping women, fluorescent lights, urinals, and unmade beds. All could be considered art in this brave new world. People argued the point, saying some modern art was shit, and some of it really was. Modern art! Look at it! It's fucking shit! Art today is a many-headed creature. The need to create is clearly part of the human condition, an unquenchable desire which is as old as our species and quite probably embedded in our DNA as innate to us as eating, fighting, and laughing at other people's misfortune. But it's also big business. You're equally likely to see famous artwork on a mug, a t-shirt, or in a boardroom as in a gallery. The rise of cinema, television, and the internet has led to a dissemination of a common visual culture into every corner of the globe, while the giddying pace of technology's ceaseless progress has democratized the entire means of artistic production, meaning we can now plug into an all-encompassing worldwide maelstrom of information at any time we like, 
and watch a load of jumping badges. We interrupt this program to bring you... As time progress, so do we. With the help of different social media platforms, Philippine Broadcast expanded its reach. You can now be updated whenever and wherever. Maraming halimbawa ang digital art. Isa na dito, ang digital painting. May dalawang klase ng digital paintings. Ito ay 2D at 3D digital painting. 2D because uh, in order to master, in order for me to easily transit, uh, transit to 3D digital painting, I prefer to have more of a background and understanding of 2D digital. And that technically means that I have to master anatomy, not really master, master, because of course I'm still young, I'm still 21, but technically getting more of the grasp uh, in anatomy, perspective, coloring, understanding emotions, uh, doing backgrounds, combining each element, understanding focal points, there's so many things. Ang 2D digital paintings ay mga hand drawings na may mga pagkukulang na mahirap ayusin. Pero maaari itong ma-improve gamit ang app. Ito rin ay ipinipinta sa isang flat surface na walang halong effects. It is simple but must be visually appealing and artistically satisfying. In terms of 3D digital painting, there are people who can do 3D digital without actually being able to draw because you only need to understand physics you need to understand how things work how things move how to make it not look awkward but it would be great if you have like a really good background on 2d 3d digital painting is a foundation of 2d digital painting because saan mayroon itong parehong features with 2d but it's more advanced version because sa 2d ay hindi ka pwede mag-add ng effects pero sa 3d ay pwede pwede and this model there's a higher opportunity to attract these people attention. Isa pa ang halimbawa ay ang animation. Animation is the process of designing, sketching, creating layouts, and preparing photographic sequences na maaaring gamitin sa digital media at gaming materials. Ang animation rin ay ang paggamit at pagmanipulate ng still images para makalikha ng illusion of movements. Alam niyo rin ba na gumagamit ang mga animators ng iba't ibang computer technologies to capture still images and videos? That's true, Jiwo! Hindi lamang ito para mag-entertain, but it's also a useful tool for visual communication. It also offers a new concept sa isang masilin na pagpapahayag, but in a more practical level. Ang isa rin sa mga digital arts ay ang pixel art. Ang pixel art ay konektado sa mga videos at images na ginagamit sa films, applications, or even graphical endeavors. In terms of this pixel art, as we all know, pixel art has uh, started a, a very long time ago. It's like the first very uh, type of art in games. It was the until it evolved into 2D and then 3D. So pixel art is more of um, this. Re this refers to having a lower DPI or dots per inch in your drawing. In order to achieve this type of art, you do not. Um, in in short, uh, you make sure to emphasize the boxiness. If you get what I mean, like you emphasize the pixels. Uh, into your drawing so it makes things not smooth but actually fun fact everything that you see right now in the monitor um, it's all made out of pixels the difference is it's not emphasized as a pixel art because it is now identified as 2d or 3d because pixel art has a lower number of pixels until now, people still love pixel art because the the feeling of like the classics or the old times, um, it's still really good. Ito rin ay ginagawa gamit ng specialized software that enables 8 and 16-bit computers 
pati na rin ang mga ilang graphic formulas at video game systems. Mahilig ka bang magpa-picture o humarap sa camera? Kung ganon, meron din tinatawag na digital photography. Digital photography, video editing, cinematography, all those things are all under multimedia arts. So, if you want to learn all the things that I've just mentioned, it is preferable that you go to multimedia arts. But it really depends because if you want to specialize something, you could either go to fine arts, um, media arts, like there's so many courses that you can take. Alam nyo ba na ang salitang digital photography ay binuo gamit ang pag ng mga computers that led to the use of digital cameras para makapture ang ideal image na hindi kayang gawin ng ibang camera. Ang mga digital cameras ay ginagamit rin ng electrical wavelengths that is already integrated into the camera itself that helps shape the perfect shot. Ang nahahatuwa rin dito ay ang photography ay naging available na rin sa mga smartphones. Tama! Tuwing talaga napakalaki ng ambag ng technology sa atin, hindi ba? Totoo yan. Kaya dapat nating pahalagahan ang mga ito upang mabigyan rin ng importansya at ma-appreciate ng mga susunod pang henerasyon. Tired of scrolling your news feeds category all the time? Well, be updated of the news that you only wanted to see. Presenting the all-new IC News app, it allows you to categorize the news that you only wanted to be notified, be it political, economical, entertainment, and even the latest chica of your favorite actor. IC News app, available on Google Play Store and Apple Store. If you're gonna ask me how did digital art help me, to be honest, traditional art and digital art are similar. Actually, they're the same in terms of making art, uh, making the, the fact that you are making art, but the difference is just the medium. So technically, traditional art takes a lot more time, takes a lot more um, experience, or like you need to understand everything even how you should use your brush or how many amounts of water do you put how much of paint how to mix the colors yourself like everything is done manually so as we all know since um as technology improves people want things to be done faster that's why we have the digital side digital um digital doing digital art customized brushes or you can make the custom brushes yourself that can be easily controlled by the uh, can be easily controlled through the program so there's not much difference to it but a lot of people do debate about it like which is better traditional and digital to be honest it's just the same for me it's just that you need to uh, adjust by learning some things in um, computer if you need if you want to do digital but at the end of the day you use your hand to draw even if you're using a mouse, you're using a pencil, uh, maybe a pen tab, or a Cintiq, or a Puyon, or anything else, it's still the same. You use your hand, you use your mind. So yeah. But right now, the most, um, as you all know, the most, most seen in the eyes right now, like in computers, or the more hyped, yeah, there we go. The more hyped type of art right now is digital art. I'm not saying traditional art is not, it's still a hype and actually they value a lot if you can really or if you have a great skill or if, if you are ma mastered the things that I've mentioned earlier that I'm still practicing and you can do it in traditional, your art could sell a lot, like definitely a lot a lot. How is digital art beneficial to me, to others and to society? Actually digital or traditional or whatever art Art itself is everywhere, like the chair you're sitting to, uh, sitting on to, the table you're using. It's it's still on the art side. Uh, I like the colors you see. Everything is art, like art. Because um, as we all know, in the past, uh, in the Philippines, or actually even in other countries, uh, there there have been. Um, 
great wars that uh, world war that happened in the past where where art uh, has risen up into the um, certain era because uh, people needed something to cope up to themselves emotionally or mentally art can bring us up can lift us up or you can use art to voice out some some concerns some social issues so many things for me art is beneficial for me because it makes me um, able to to bring out all the ideas I have in my mind usually I have a really complex uh, ideas that are actually hard to understand for other people I mean there could be other people out there that could understand it but I'm saying like um, there are instances where there are people who cannot really rely or who cannot really interpret what they are thinking to words or maybe to verbal so there's this art like you could just draw it and people are and un- would understand it or maybe you could take a picture of it or maybe take a video or like make a film out of it and that is really beneficial to me and to others because they they are able to know what could be out there like what else are the things that they did not know the things that they have to realize you can influence people greatly with art what is the process of digital art okay and listen to this one for making art you have to think about the idea what do you want to draw you know you can start out with the simple things you don't have to go to the complicated ones yeah so number one think of an idea number two always write it down what are your ideas enumerate them like make a spider web of your ideas and then connect which ones goes which and then number three sketch it out sketching means you don't need, you don't need to do like a, a like a very good outline immediately just sketch the reason why sketch is really important is because at the sketch stage you are able to tell what could be what could have gone wrong because if you immediately do the outlines and then call it immediately and just assess what is wrong and you realize oh no the shoulders look awkward the arms are too short you're gonna have to restart again because like you had made so much progress so you have to make sure you maybe come up with at least two sketches or maybe adjust it while you're sketching because it saves you time then after that you have to refine your sketches after that you identify where's the light where 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 are you gonna put light so the light tells a lot of things it could tell um, what are you trying to achieve what kind of emotion because if you if you put the light above you it, it could mean hope if you put the light under like the head of a character it will look evil right <laughs> something like that you have to consider those things and then after distinguishing well the, where the light are that means you already know where's the dark sides right and that's when you start choosing your colors or maybe you could just start with gray scales it depends on you for me i'm comfortable with either it depends on my mood you know because sometimes you don't want to sometimes if the idea you're doing is really hard you would end up doing the gray scales first and add the colors later so yeah there's so many things you have to remember like the principles of art you have to consider the contrasting colors the, those things and then once you have let's say once we you've started make uh, identifying the lights which means you know the shadows you can start figuring out the palette you're gonna do or the colors that you want to uh, use and then you can make a layer if you're using photoshop just make a layer and then multiply it so that you can recolor it anytime or you can adjust it easily instead of like putting it directly on it there are other artists who do that those who are actually really good already like they can just do everything in one layer if you think you're not yet that confident you can just take your time you, you know you cannot rush art right <laughs> you do not rush art i would like to emphasize that <laughs> yeah so technically you start rendering you start rendering of course if you're sure that that's what you want to go with if it's okay if there's nothing wrong if this there's no off proportions or is it does it look weird do you need to adjust it more yeah you have to consider those things and 
after that if you want to do a background sure why not for me i often do non-backgrounds because i wanted to not master but like have more understanding experience on doing uh, portraits like the person the people first before i head on to the backgrounds because backgrounds are not really um entirely hard if you understand the the concept of reality or how reality works or how the surrounding works sometimes you just sit there and then just look a lot, look around you and it's like oh this is how the perspective works this is from my line of sight like you have to learn perspective too because it, it could help a lot so yeah after rendering you're, you're about there that's about it if you're not happy about your final output don't be sad because every artist have this experience where they draw something bad but they don't really show it to the public they just skip it to themselves and they usually just post the best ones sometimes you have to draw the bad ones in order for the good ones to come out you know bad and good there's no bad if there's no good there's no good if there's no bad right so yeah that's about it about art alam mo ba na marami kang pwede maging career sa arts pwede ka rin maging illustrator animator art director product designer, at pwede ka rin maging art teacher. Ang dami rin pala na pwede mong maging career sa arts, no? Tuning ang napakalaga ng sining. Katulad ng sinabi ni Mika, talagang nakatulong ang paglikha ng iba't ibang arts dahil na-express din nila ang kanilang damdamin sa pamamagitan nito. At hindi lang yon, mapatraditional art o digital art pa yan, pareho nito mapapayaman ang kultura ng ating sining. Ang dami ko natutunan ngayon! Nag-enjoy rin ako ng sobra! Dahil kasama natin ang mga art ventures pagtuklas sa isang sining. Ako rin! Hindi ba't nakakabilib na kahit lumaki ang mga kabataan ngayon sa mundo ng makabagong teknolohiya, ay marami pa rin silang natututunan. Tama yan! Dapat natin pagmalaki at pahalagaan ang creativity ng isang tao. Technology also has a big role to play in the creation of works. Sa pamamagitan nito, ay madidiskobre ng mga kabataan ang kanilang masining at technological capability na maaari mong bigay ng opportunities and possibilities that they can take in their path in lives. Digital art has to reach all borders and enhance the availability of art throughout the world. You got it right, Chiwo! Kaya laging tandaan ang art na hindi tungkol sa mga kagamitan upang makalikha ng isang obra sa halip nito ay ang pagtingin mensahe, at damdamin ng manlilikha. Isang malikhaing araw na naman ang lumipas. Maraming salamat sa pagsama sa aming paglalakbay, mga ka-art ventures! Ako si Gian. At ako si Jewel. Magkita kita tayo muli. Ito ang Art, art Ventures! ventures.